Hello everyone, this is Miss Ruby. Our topic for this week is going to be Sun and Sea Festival. My project is going to be an ocean slime. Let's get here the ingredients for my ocean slime. One teaspoon of contact solution, one foot of baking soda, one third of clear glue, one rainbow glitter, fur, ocean beads, and bowl. Don't forget to clean up after you're done. Make sure you wash your hands. Now let's get started. One third of clear glue. Contact solution. Rainbow glue. Okay, we're gonna add beads. Now let's mix it. So pretty. You can squish it and stretch and have fun, okay? And please don't forget to clean up your mess. Bye, guys. For this part, we will do some brain teasers and pop quiz. But just a heads up, you can easily pause the video if you need more time thinking for the answers. So we will start with pop quiz. Question number one. How much does the ocean cover our Earth's surface? The answer is letter C, 70%. So number two. What is the most toxic marine animal in the world? Answer, letter A, box jellyfish. Question number three. A squid has eight tentacles like an octopus. True or false? The answer is false. Squids only have two tentacles. Question number four. How many pairs of legs does a crab have? Crabs have five pairs of legs. Now it's brain teasers time! First question. What never gets any wetter no matter how much it rains? What's the answer? It's water. For the second question, how do oceans say hello to each other? Of course, they would wave at each other. Third question. I have wings and I have a tail. Across the sky is where I sail. Yet, I have no eyes, ears, nor mouth. And I bob randomly from north to south. What am I? This is a tricky question, but the answer is a kite. Last question. The more you take, the more you leave behind. What are they? Of course, the answer would be footprints. Bye kids, I hope you had fun trying to solve the problems. Hi guys, Mr. Eric here. Welcome to your first week of summer camp. So for this week, this video is going to be me singing my favorite beach song of all time. It's called I'm Yours by Jason Mraz. There's a really nice ukulele tune to it, so that's why it reminds me of the beach and just, you know, having a chill vibe down there and having fun. Enjoy.
Well, you done done me and you bet I felt it I tried to beat you, but you so hot that I melted I fell right through the cracks And now I'm trying to get back Before the cool done run out I'll be giving it my best Just enough that's gonna stop me for divine intervention I reckon it's again my turn To win some or learn some But I won't hesitate no more, no more It cannot wait I'm yours Well, open up your mind and see like me Open up your plans and damn you're free I look into your heart and you'll find love, 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 love Listen to the music of the moment people dance and sing We're just one big family And it's our God for sake right to be love, 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 love Hi Summer Camp, this is Mr. Josh from Emory Elementary here Today, I want to share with you guys a fun summer game I call the Beanbag Toss. Now, before I get started, please guys, make sure to have adults supervise you at all times while you're playing the game. Also, make sure to wash your hands before and after you are done playing. And also, please, make sure to clean up after yourselves, okay? So, the Beanbag game is a game that's pretty fun to play on the beach. Or you can also play in the backyard like I am as well. As well as um, if you have like the inflatable set right here. You can also play in your own pool as well. So to get started, you're gonna wanna stand right over here by your goal. And the whole point of this game is to be able to score more uh, bean bags in your opponent's goal and try to get as high of a score over them. So to get started, you know, stand like I said, stand right here by your goal. And then you're gonna wanna throw your bean bag underhand, okay? So you throw it underhand like this. See how my arm is like this? You don't want to throw it overhand because that puts too much force into it and you're more likely to miss the goal. So watch this right here, underhands. And just like that, I scored on the goal right there. It's pretty cool, huh? So after that, your opponent goes next and whether they make it or miss, then your turn is next. And then you guys decide how many points you want to go up to. But other than that though, this is the basics of playing the beanbag toss and I hope you guys had a fun time learning this game, okay? missed hello guys so this is the theme of the video it's called sun and sea festivals hello summer camp this is miss sabrina on today's video it will be about soccer practice and i will be teaching you some soccer kicks and some stretches remember guys stay safe hello everyone before starting our soccer practice we will need a soccer ball water and a mat I recommend water because we're gonna be very tired and so water can help you hydrate yourself. Let's get started. So our first stretch is we're gonna reaching our toes. We're gonna start with the right leg, then the left. We're gonna do five on each. So let's get started. So one, two, three, four, five. Now the left leg, one, two, three, four, and five. So the next stretch will be ankle rotations. So we're gonna start with the right, then the left is gonna be five on each. So let's start with the right leg. One, two, three, four, and five. Now the left leg. One, two, three, four, and five. So now we're moving on to, to some kick. Wait. Kicking the ball, you kick it with the front of your shoe where the shoelaces are located. When you're trying to pass the ball, you kick it with the inner of your when toe. When passing the ball with the inner of your toe, so one, two. With the front of your toe where the shoelaces are located, one, two, and there you have it. So I'll show you two things how you can kick and pass the ball when you're in the soccer practice or tournament. Bye! Oh. 
Hello everyone, welcome to Summer Camp. My name is Miss Martha and I wanted to show you how to make sea sand. Let's get started. Hope you enjoy it too. I have two ingredients, all purpose flour and baby oil. And of course you're gonna need a measuring cup, one spoon and a bowl to mix. I already added four cups of flour in here. And remember, um, always have an adult with you when you make projects. And at the end, please don't forget to clean up. And then, you're going to add one spoon of baby oil. And then, we're going to mix. You could use a regular spoon. I decided to make it funner. I added some shovels. get messy friends and then you could start making your your fun little balls you could also make your little stars here see that friends so just don't forget to clean up at the end and that's it friends i hope you guys enjoyed it bye hello everyone my name is miss maudi and this week we are doing summer camp with this video called it sun and sea festival and i want to share with you how can you make these kinds of art craft like these rainbow colored flowers so stay tuned so the first and easy way that i learned how to create a rainbow pasta is using this color food. In this case, I want to use uh, red. So just place on a little Ziploc bag, any kind of uh, shape of pasta, few drops, and few drops of water. Then mix it, shake it, let it dry. And then you will have rich color red like this. So another easy, easy way that I learned to have rainbow pasta is using these semi-moist watercolors with my brush with a little drops of water and that's it. You will have something like this, amazing colors. And the last but not least way that I learned how to create rainbow pasta is using this kind of acrylic paints with my brush and you have amazing colors too, like this. If you wanna create a rainbow pasta flower, the only thing you, you need, four to five rainbow pasta, put a little dot of glue in the middle, let it dry, and that's it. Here you have it. So hope that you learned, enjoyed this video, clean your area, wash your hands, take care, and goodbye! Ah! <laughs>
con sus mascarillas cuando salgan para afuera y nos vemos en el próximo video bye hello summer camp our theme for this week is sun and sea festival today i'm going to show you how to make one of the sea animals and it is called the jellyfish hi this is miss nilda from emory today i'm going to show you how to make a jellyfish a jellyfish is a sea animal with lots of tentacles on it Here are the we need a paper plate, Japanese paper, glue, pair of scissors, we need a puncher, the yarn, and googly eyes. If you don't have googly eyes, you can just use black and black. Now we are going to cut papers into small pieces like this. Day in for a worse update. One day when the boss get hungry, yes you go beyond the pay. What do under the sea? After pasting the pieces of paper, we're going to cut the lower portion of the paper. Then we're going to find some holes in the lower portion. Of the people. We want the land folks loves to cook. Under the sea we have to hook. We got no troubles. Now let's the bubbles uh, under the sea. The under the sea. Please please please. Seems like this we use the sea we are natural Even the sturgeon and the rain. They did the earth and start to After punching the holes, we're now going to put the yarns inside the holes. Here now is our jellyfish kids. Enjoy making your own jellyfish. It's now ready to swim under the sea. Bye. Hi, this is Miss Jasmine, and today I'm going to be reading you guys a book that I wrote, and hopefully this can give you ideas on how you can write and illustrate your own stories. The boy and the seashell. One summer day, a young boy was wandering the beach. As he felt the warm sand slip through his toes, he came upon a curious sight, a seashell that glowed iridescently in the golden rays of the sun. It was large and fell cool in his hands. He recalled something his mother had once told him. When you put a seashell to your ear, you can hear the sound of the ocean. The young boy pressed the seashell to his ear and listened. He did not hear the sound of the ocean, however. The young boy heard laughter, the laughter of children fluttering and soft. Hello, the young boy called. Hello, a voice called from the other end of the seashell, and a strange thing happened. The young boy had found that he was no longer on the beach. He could not see the clouds floating in the sky, nor could he see the surface of the blue ocean, which stretched for miles. He could not feel the sand in his toes or the warmth of the sun against his skin. Instead, a watery landscape of azure unfolded before him. Where am I? the young boy asked himself. You're in the kingdom of the sea fairies. The young boy turned to find a small creature, just a bit larger than his hand, smiling at him with sparkling sapphire eyes. Welcome, young human. What is your name? the small fairy asked. My name is Kai, the little boy answered. How did I get here? I brought you here, the fairy said. What do you think? It's pretty, Kai said, like an aquarium. There were fish swimming every which way, fish that shined like an emerald jewel and fish that glowed like the embers of a fire. There were fish that were as small as the tip of his pinky, and there were fish that were so big Kai could not see where the fish began or where the fish ended. Although the fairy showed Kai many things, the Sea Kingdom was much too large to show at once. There are so many amazing things to see here in the Sea Kingdom. You can stay here with us and I can show you everything there is to see, the fairy said excitedly. That sounds like fun, Kai returned, but he frowned and shook his head. But I have a family too, like the fish, and I have to go home. I can't stay here in the Sea Kingdom. You have to leave, the sea fairy began to cry. Don't worry, the young boy said, giving the fairy a gentle pat. I'll play with you again someday, I promise. Really? the fairy asked. Really? Kai said with a smile. Then, okay. The sea fairy held Kai's hand. But don't forget your promise. I won't, Kai nodded. 
The next moment, Kai opened his eyes to find that he was lying atop the soft sand. Kai stood and dusted the sand off his clothes. Had he been asleep the whole time? Was that all a dream? From the distance, Kai heard the sound of his mother's voice calling his name. Coming, he called and ran. Kai did not know whether that was a dream, but he would nevertheless forget the promise he had made with the sea fairy. Left behind was a seashell that glowed iridescently in the golden rays of the sun. What will you hear when you listen to the voice of the ocean?